Okay, so good evening and welcome everyone to the Power Apps user group. Welcome to everyone from Joburg and Cape Town and from wherever else you are joining. Now, just as usual, quick logistics, just keep yourself on mute during the course of the session. Um, background noise can cause interruptions to the rest of the people on the call. But that being said, I'm sure the people don't mind being interrupted. So if you have a question, you've got something to add, come off mute, use the chat window. We are keeping an eye on all of those items. Now, the session is being recorded and we do upload them to our YouTube channel. You can see a link to the YouTube channel up in the top right hand corner of the screen at the moment. So we've been capturing all of our recordings there since the start of lockdown and since we've been doing these virtually. So if you've missed out on one, you can go back and check and see what was covered in those sessions. Or if you do need to drop off early, at least you will be able to go back and see what has happened. Uh, we are going to have Mr. Price presenting a solution today. Uh, we've been asked not to record that, so I will be um, stopping the recording during that portion and then I'll just re-kick it off afterwards. So. Structure for today, we're just going to go through some news items. I'll take you through that. Then we're going to hand over to Mr. Price to take us through uh, one of the apps that they've developed internally. Uh, David, you got a tech tip lined up for us today? I do, I do. Okay, and then Michael's cookbook, we might not do. Michael not, might not be able to join. I know he is driving at the moment. Um, so we might just skip that portion then for today, and then we'll just open up the floor to any general questions that anyone may have. Now, before we get started, is there anything that anyone wants to raise before we get going? Okay, perfect. So that, let me just bring this up here quickly. So let's go through some of the news items that have come out in the past couple of weeks. Now, one bit that's exciting is the demo extravaganza is now open. So if you've got an app that you want to submit and possibly demonstrate in that, um, the submissions are now open. Let me just get rid of my head quickly. Uh, if you check the link at the bottom of the page there, I will pop this into the chat window just now as well. Uh, entry started yesterday, so you can go in and submit your applications to there. And what's nice about this time around is you can work on it as a team. Team submissions have been allowed now. So we've got up until the 1st of June to get your apps and that uploaded. And then voting starts on the 1st. And then the announces will, well, the finalists will be announced on 21st of July. Uh, there is also, there's two portions there's the demo apps, and then there's also components as well. So if you've developed some really cool components and you want to share that out, there is a separate registration for the components portion. So I will drop a link to both of those as well once uh, I'm finished with the news. Okay. Next item is we are introducing custom pages and a new modern app design for model driven apps. So you'll see uh, we are bringing in a lot more customization into model driven app styles. You can see on the screen at the moment that it is a much richer interface giving you a lot more flexibility on model driven apps coming very close to what you have available in canvas based apps. Uh, so you can start playing around with it. This is uh, should be uh, in preview at the moment. Uh, if it might still be coming to your tenants shortly, though. So you can see there is that new modern app designer, which is going to give you the customization to assemble those pages and then display them within that model-driven app. Uh, so bringing the yeah, there's the custom page designer. So just like you were working with your pages before. Um, you can see a very similar interface to the uh, Canvas based app, just giving you a lot more flexibility that you had previously. There have also been some updates and changes to Excel online or uh, Azure file storage. The big thing with the new Excel connector, it now supports multiple users. So in the past, if you were working with an Excel file, uh, if you had more than one person trying to open up the app, they would have issues. It now supports multiple users and can work with all standard libraries. So whether you're using OneDrive, SharePoint, or even Office 365 groups, this is going to work great. Um, I'm not happy about that. 
I'm, I'm scared. What more, more people are going to start using it now. <laughs> using Excel as their data source. Don't yeah. say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's making it posted? easier and making it more robust. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be interesting now to see what this turns into. Another very exciting thing that's coming out is environment variables are now going to be available. So this is used a lot in your application lifecycle management processes. Um, so these uh, variables can help you for a variety of application lifecycle scenarios. It really, what it does is it allows you to externalize the input parameters for the components that you have on your page. So instead of you having to hard code a connection to a data source within your application, and then when you move it, you've got to go in and change it, you can just get it pointing to specific environments uh, variables. So that way, when you're changing it between environments, you need to change the data sources. All you need to do is update those environment variables. This is going to make the process a lot simpler and a lot easier. You're able to reuse these across uh, various apps, various flows, as well as other components that you have available in there. Um, and the best thing of all, I know David and Michael will love this, is it doesn't require a premium license like the case before. So you're able to do this with just the standard licensing and it doesn't require uh, querying uh, Dataverse as it was in the past. So you don't need that premium license anymore. Okay. Another really great addition is now your desktop flows or uh, the Power Automate desktop app can connect online directly no need for a gateway anymore. So in the past, if you needed to uh, call your flows from the cloud, you need to make sure that you had that on-premise data gateway installed and connected up into that environment. This is no longer needed. The Power Automate desktop app is going to act as that gateway on its own. And we're adding a lot of new interfaces in that to make it easier to manage. You can see when you go into the our automate site there's a new section with the machines so all the machines that have been have been added in you can group machines together when you're performing certain tasks and you can just get insights on the status on how they're running and everything else and when you are busy building out your flow you'll see there is a section where you can go and connect to the machines directly instead of you having to jump through a gateway or get a gateway installed over there you can see the amount of investment that's been made in this at the moment. So this is really great. It makes it a lot easier to get these things up and running. Uh, another new addition that's been added now is there's been a new visualization that's been added to Power BI, giving you the ability to initiate or trigger workflows directly from a Power BI report. So you'll see you can bring this visualization in, attach your data sources to it that you wanted to pull through or send through to Power Automate, and then you can just trigger it directly from there. So you'd still go build out your flows within Power Automate, and then from here, when you bring that in and you want to link it up, it's just going to pull through all the flows that have already got Power BI as the trigger, or you can go and create a new one as you normally would. We're also bringing AI Builder directly into Teams now, making it very easy for you to leverage AI Builder directly in the Teams interface. And you're also going to be seeing a lot more improvements in this space as well, especially with regards to Teams. Um, because we are making a big investment in there, we've seen now Dataverse for Teams is available in South Africa, and we're actually seeing a lot of momentum over there. We've seen how they've extended the amount of environments you are able to create, and now we're starting to see all these other components coming in as well. So uh, AR Boulder, once you've added Power Automate into Teams, you can go to the tab to start using one of those AI Boulder templates. Now, sticking with AI Boulder, there have been some improvements on the forms processor, um, specifically giving you the ability to now work with tables, 
in the past it was only certain entities you would be able to select and now you would be able to select a table that you want to be able to extract uh, this is adding a lot of value and making it a lot easier for organizations to work with these forms that they are pulling through directly okay so check it out these should start rolling out soon these are the last announcements that have been coming through in the last month and I think that's it for the news. Is there anything that anyone else might have picked up or may want to mention else? Yeah, oh, handwriting is another thing. We were actually talking with some doctors the other day and they were waiting for AI to be able to understand their handwriting. So that's another story. Okay, perfect. So, Today we've got um, a couple of gents from Mr. Price, Spoo and PC. They're going to be taking us through a solution that they've built inside Mr. Price. I don't know too much about it, but I'll let them give you the background. So Spoo, PC, I'm going to hand over to you. Let me stop the recording for now. The recording has started. You can carry on. Cool. Right, yes, so what I'm oh, sorry, no, I can see your video now. Okay, awesome. So, cool. What I'm going to show you today is how to compare two arrays in, in Power Apps. Um, so, what I've created is a, a very clean Power App. You'll see I went for a very clean design. Not a lot of not, not a lot of uh, fuss and, and clutter in this one. Um, and essentially, to start with, I'm going to start with a button and just populate a simple array to give everybody an idea of what it is that we're going to be doing. So let's say you've got two lists, right? So let's create the first list and we say names in this list is Mike and Donald. And if you now click on this button, it's not going to do anything with it. So we just want to write this into a variable. So we want to say var temp, write it into that. And what I want to show you is what actually happens with an array like this. And you'll see that if I click on the button, it's writing this into a variable. And so if you go into variables, go into there, you'll see that it creates a one column table um, with one column called value and then the values inside of that. So there's Mike and Donald. So if then I want to check if there is a specific value in that array. Um, it could be quite easy, and I could just take that array. And for this, I'm just going to create a label and say compare and check if Mike is in that array. And this is, of course, going to return true. So it's going to say, going to look in all of these values. It doesn't necessarily need to be the first one. I can just go and say, I uh, also go and check Donald, and that's also going to be true. And this by default, it knows that it just needs to check the column value. So if I go and do uh, that array dot value, it'll also give me a true. If I go and look for Tyson in this list, and uh, it's obviously going to say false because it can't find Tyson in that array. Now, what happens if you want to run through an array and com basically compare two arrays to go and check whether one or all of the values from the first array exist in the second one? So there's no such a function in Power App. So there's nothing that you can do um, out of the box um, or a specific function where you can tell it go and check whether that contains all of the values or whether all of the members from the one is in the other. So that's what I want to show you today and, and how you can actually do that. And um, that, that works on one column arrays or objects as well. So it could be an array of objects and it'll work very, very much the same. Right, so what I'm going to be doing is uh, create another button and let's say we want to compare. So that's the, the source array that we want to check and we're now going to be doing a for all. Now, for those of you who haven't worked with for all um, a lot, it's it's really powerful. And um, it's definitely something that I recommend you play with. But what a lot of people don't realize is a for all actually returns an array in itself. 
So you don't only use for all to perform certain actions like patch and these sort of things. In fact, never use a for all on patch, rather do bulk uploads with collections. Uh, but if you just use a for all, that in itself generates an array. And what I'm going to show you now is if I go and um, do a for all, you'll see the source is this array. So I'm going to say run through this array and apply um, this function to all of those values. And the only thing I want to return is the value. And so this is if I go and write this into a variable. So it's a school. If I write this into Vartemp2, it's just going to give me the exact same array. And so this for all just returns the function or the result of each into a new array. So if I go into the variables, Vartemp2, you'll see that this again just has exactly the same values. So it's a one column table, a column name is value with the values in that. Now, it becomes a little bit more interesting. So we're saying that what now happens, I'm just going to copy um, those, this portion over here, and I'm now going to insert another label so we can actually just see the result on the fly. So now we want to say, um, run through the error I'm getting now is because the for all is returning an array and obviously the text label is like, I don't know what you want me to do with this. So it's giving me this value. But now what you could do and what we're going to be doing is saying, compare each one of these items, all right? And go and check if they exist in this other array. So we're going to say, let's say the array that we want to compare this to might be, just copy that. And we're going to say, return that and compare if that is in this other array. All right, so I just want to check. Uh, I'm going to check what's happening with that. Uh, for all in. No, that doesn't look right. Okay, so I just have a, a little one that's uh, standing next to me. So I just want to quickly deal with this, uh, my, my kid quickly. Hold on a sec. Okay, so all right, so that is returning, sorry, that is returning an array again. So what I want to do is go and check in that array, see if true exists in that array. Um, sorry for the noise in the in the background. So go and check if true is in this array, and that then actually returns uh, true or false in this label. All right. So in this case, it's saying true is exists in this array. So in the process of comparing each one of those, um, it can it found one true, which obviously it did. If I go and change that to Mike one and Donald one, I'm going to say false, which means that it couldn't find um, any of these values in in that array over there. So if I change the first one back to Mike, you'll see that immediately becomes true again. All right, so and then also if you want to check if make sure that all of them exist in there, you'll go and say make sure that false isn't in there and you'll turn the value, the Boolean value a value around by putting an exclamation in front of it. So now if any one of if not all of these items belong in the second exist in the second list, it's going to give you a false. So if I go and change that, it now gives you a true because there's no faults in this array that is returned by for all. Right, so any questions? So, um, yeah, can you, obviously for all returns array, are you saying that it returns the array of all the items it found, or it returns the array of true or false of the items it found? So what exactly. I'm trying to get to is, is 
how can I find out is which ones of those values were found in the second second array? So if I have array one of 15 um, items and array two of 10 items, which are the 15 items are in the 10 items and vice versa? All right, so let's use this example. So you've got Mike and Donald, so you wanna check which ones um, aren't there. So what I would then do is say, um, instead of using the in, I would go and say return that value. So if okay. it finds this in there, then it should return the actual Donald and not true or false. Mm. So I'll, I'll write a little if statement in there. Okay. And, um, right. So so just on your first on your first comment, that's exactly right. So if I go and take this and I write this into a variable, so var temp four three, I think. Um, if I go and write that into that variable you'll see that this is now a list of okay, true all right, 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 right. So and this, one question is it are those is those, those truths the the, the um, setting the the what's the word I'm looking for um, sequential the, yeah the sequential so Correct. Mike zero Donald one blah 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 so you could also look at uh, iterate through those and see uh, Whichever is true, it, they sequentially aligned, and whoever is false, they sequentially aligned. So for now, it does work like that. So all of the cases that I have seen that it does work, but I think in principle, the 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 way that for all you works, or the the, the method that it uses in future, might actually you know not necessarily uh -huh. do it in that uh -huh. order. Okay. So I wouldn't okay. base too much logic in the order. Mm. But for now, every time that I have done this, it has returned it in the correct order. So um, you'll see there's not true yeah, and a false. false. Yes. Okay. Exactly. So. Okay. Cool. All right. So yeah, for all this is phenomenal. Um, it's it's especially useful for um, performing actions, but then also for for comparisons like this, where it just generates an array on the fly. Um, so I've been having a lot of fun with for all lately. Cool, thanks. Cool, any other questions? Piggybacking off of that, um, wouldn't it be easier if you were to write the output, um, uh, the output of the values found along with the true? I know it's getting a little bit nested in that um, in that formula, but that would it should allow you to at least uh, align the data that you're finding with the value if it was found or not. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, but yeah, uh, so I don't even want to know what that function's going to look like. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so so you could do that, or if you if you essentially want to get a clean list, you know, there's a couple of ways to do that. So you could also do, you know, a remove if. So you can compile a a new collection. So then you instead of using the the array, then you'll actually use a collection. So you'd say that look at this collection, and if it finds that value in that, then remove it. Mm, or saying, so. write the, or write the value that it found and the, the true or false if it was found and then iterate through that. Exactly. So and I think that the nice thing about doing this in Power Apps and not directly in the data source, you, you don't have delegation issues. So you could actually you could perform this on on quite a, a large set of data and it, it works fine. You know where many of these things. So the in operator at the moment um, isn't delegatable to many data sources. So just keep that in mind. At the moment you, you actually connect to a SQL column or whatever, um, you're gonna you're gonna run into delegation issues. Mm, and you're gonna push up your transactions, which starts affecting quotas and things like that, especially if you're calling multiple data sets in the background. Rather do it on the app app or the device that's actually doing it. Yeah, it depends on it depends on the application and the data source. You know, sometimes it's not always possible to suck everything into Power Apps. Um, but if you want to do advanced things like this with SQL, then I find it better to just throw it at Power Automate and then issue a SQL query to SQL and get the answer. So, you know, so if, if you have SQL to you, to your, uh, you know, available to you. Any other questions? Uh, David, this one, uh, yeah. is is that case sensitive? Um, the actual. Uh, let's check quickly. I think it is. So there it's picking up Mike. 
yeah, so now it is, let's actually just check that as well. So I think it is case sensitive. So if you wanted to ignore the case, oh, it's actually not case sensitive. So it's picking up Mike, even though it's a diff in a different case. So within your, your for all, if you, if you want to do transformations like that, you can do quite um, sexy stuff in this part of the formula as well, you know, to really change and manipulate what this thing is comparing. So, and, uh, and it's actually quite fast. It's actually amazingly fast in Power Apps on the front end. Uh, cool. So any other, any other questions? So, yeah, and, and if you have got a, a complex array, like a multi-dimensional array, um, I don't know what the four all can extend into, but let's say, you know, I've got like, I don't know, JSON or something popped in there. Um, how difficult is that to to filter that out? It should be fine. It's it's just if you're gonna so if you're gonna write the for all on the top level, you just need to drill down to the actual okay. data you're looking for in in this section yeah. over here. Um, you know, so so things like um, you know stripping email addresses. So you might want to grab an email address and just take the first letter of the of the first value before a dot concatenate that with the first letter of the second value after the dot you know so you could do a split on this and do a first and concatenate it over there um, and then compare it to an existing list so there's there's really endless endless possibilities with this cool any other questions No, that looks good. Thanks for sharing, Dollar. Pleasure, man. Okay, so let's just check. We don't have Michael on the call. No, he's probably still driving, so we're going to skip the last bit there. So what I want to do is just open up the floor to any general questions, anything that you may have or want to know a bit more, anything that you would like to share with the community tonight. Well, now I see your picture there, so I'm going to pick on you. Anything you want to add or contribute tonight? Uh, sorry, I, I joined a bit late, and I don't really have a voice tonight. Um, if, I don't know if, if anybody hasn't seen it yet. There has been some great sessions at the Business Application Summit. I don't know if Jonathan yes. mentioned that. Um, but there, there's some really great things that's happening there. And then also... Um, there's been a lot of sessions, especially one of them are on this XRM virtual. Um, I'm also posting in the the, the session um, link in the chat is xrmvirtual.com. And they've got some great sessions as well of, of things that they've just uh, showcased. Um, all MVPs. And then there's also, I think there's a Power24 sessions that also recently happened around more announcements of the second wave and also power apps announcements and um let me quickly think i think that that's it from my side for for new things that's came out perfect yeah um, yeah the a lot of the news i got i got from the uh embass so i have posted a link into the chat window lots of recordings there so check it out if you want to go through and look at some of those sessions okay uh, thanks for that one i appreciate it Akrika, yes, you also mentioned MS Build. MS Build is coming up soon, actually. Uh, the 25th and the 20, well, 25th to the 27th of May is MS Build. So go and register. There's always some great content that's shared in there. Um, I'll post a link to the chat window now as well. So check that out. Some great events coming through. Okay, there was a question around people having smooth sailing with their Power Automate desktop, especially on the Click UR elements. Anyone picked up any funnies around that? Anyone want to add to that? Oh, 
Are you experiencing any problems with that, Marika? Hello, everyone. I guess it will be quicker if I talk. <laughs> I have recently downloaded the app and tested a few processes. And one of the processes that I like to automate is opening up and changing certain documents on our SharePoint site, for, for example. So um, I would set it up the one day and it would run fine on testing, but the next day it wouldn't because it doesn't seem to be able to, especially the UE elements, it doesn't seem to want to click on the button. So I, I um, had to keep on either writing code or finding other ways to put in shortcut keys for that. So I was just wondering if I'm the only one getting a bit frustrated with that or, but maybe nobody else has used it. Are you yet. using are you using a desktop flow for that or the web flow? I'm using a desktop flow for that. So I suspect the web might work better for that. Mm. Um, I've also tried to revert it back to the to my OneDrive to pick it up there, but uh, I seem to have the same glitch, but I'll I'll persevere. Okay, that's interesting. So, so the problem is not necessarily at the time of browsing through SharePoint to get to the library. Mm, um, mm -mm. Is it is it when when the file is actually launched and are you trying to edit it in? No, it it actually doesn't even uh, find the file. So it it's obviously the path is not exactly the same if somebody else changed it. So the uniqueness of the I would I would assume the metadata and everything else is obviously compromised. So it doesn't click on that same um, document, for instance, if it's not uh, in the exact okay. same place or has been changed in any other way beforehand. Yeah, I think what, what might work better for that is if, if it's always the same document, um, then maybe use a URL that will launch the actual document mm. and, and not browse through the SharePoint library. Yeah, that's that's. Oh, I think that that might be a, a way to look at it. Okay, great. Thank you, David. Cool. Uh, uh, France, I see your hand is up. Yeah, this is a question for the Microsoft guys. Has there been any feedback on the Catalyst training programs? Because I've registered, but the entire team has gone dead quiet. Mm, I haven't heard anything. Um, Monet, you might be closer to that on your side. I haven't did anything as well. It's specifically for the pre-sales catalyst program. There's a completion yeah. date of the 25th of June, but the guys are dead quiet. I've registered and they said, cool, you're part of it, but there's no collateral that's come it? through, nothing. Sorry. I've got the dates, but I've got no links and nothing to actually go and start the actual program itself. Okay, okay. so I'll make a note here quickly and I'll just chase up with the team and see if we can get any feedback for you, okay? Yeah, uh, hundreds euro star. Perfect. Sorry, Jonathan. One thing I'm I forgot to mention um, is that our I think it's our fast track team just released yeah. the implementation guide of I think it's over six or seven hundred pages. So so really, I posted the link is aka.ms forward slash d three sixty five implementation guide, and um, okay. yeah, it's it's really awesome. Guys, look in there, it will help a lot. <laughs> is is that focused on just D365 or does it include Power Platform as well? I must double check. I think there's a little bit of both because um, I mean, D365 is model driven apps for the dataverse and all those things. So all right, I believe sure. that there's going to be an overlap between the two, right? Yeah, that would make sense. It might be interesting to read. Thanks for sharing. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah, Monet, so, so the last time I looked for that, the, the versions I got was quite badly outdated. So I'm, I'm quite excited to see that. Great. I think that the last time we've got something like that was in CRM4. So we're going to luck. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, no, 2011 had one and they had a white paper as well. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ready downloading and I'm interested to see the content. Uh, yeah. yeah. 
10 years. Uh, a lot of things happen in 10 years. I think I still had hair back then. <laughs> <laughs> I'd no, I came in, I came into <laughs> dynamics bald. I can't blame that. Um, so also the, there's um, content that's being released on on YouTube. Um, so especially check out the Power Apps and also um, the dynamics channels, right? I know the Power Cat team is is, is quite busy at the moment with releasing new functionality and features inside things like the coe kit i know that they've extended it to include i think it is dataverse for teams um in the coe kit so that's been also recently updated um and yeah this the the, the second wave of features for for a lot of the dynamics product sets um is is currently available in preview so for instance if you've got marketing you can enable the preview functions of, of marketing. The, the new designer looks very, very awesome. Um, and yeah, I would really say play around with the, the new stuff. It, these are there's a really great things that they've improved on. Well, well thanks for that, Monet. Um, there was a request from Karika, any workshops in the pipeline? Um, I'm assuming these are the inner day workshops that we usually run. Yep. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so uh, I am planning some for the end of June. So the last two weeks of June, I'll probably get something up of what I will be doing is I will post a survey form onto the community sites onto, uh, so that you can go in and vote and register for these. If we get enough registrations in for each one, then I'll look at setting those up. So I'll probably get that survey then out before the end of the week then. So if you are interested in attending these in a day workshops, just complete the survey, we'll get your details and then we'll set those up for the last, it will be the last two weeks of June because that's usually quiet on our side. So it makes it easier for me to be able to put those together. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. Anything from anyone else? Thank you to the Mr. Okay. Price team. Um, awesome work, guys. I'm um, looking forward to seeing more coming, more demos from uh, from your side. So um, fantastic stuff. Yeah, and then once again, just like the Mr. Price guys did, if there's anything that you want to show, if you want to share in this community, please reach out, let us know. We always like seeing what you guys are doing, okay? It's a nice, safe place to practice your presentation skills as well. Robert, <laughs> yes, your turn. Yeah, um, thanks. Microsoft Power Platform uh, Fundamentals Training Day, 18th May and 16th of June, um, online event, and I think you also get a voucher for PL900 if you go through one of those. Oh, Just awesome. Check it out, yeah. Well, thanks for sharing that. Thanks. And one thing also to add from my side, I would have a look and make sure you've linked your live account to your learning account. Yeah. Or your sorry, your your um, organization account to your learning account. Um, with, with my current exam journey, every single exam has had a voucher. So if you start with the fundamentals and move your way up the chain, you most likely are going to get a voucher. I'm not sure if it's tied to your partner status with Microsoft or not, but give it a go. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting one. I haven't seen that, um, but I know that I've gotten from. Uh, last year's uh, build, you got the AZ900 um, uh, voucher and from one of the other power platform virtual training days. And I think you've got like two or three months to do it and then it expires. But, um, yeah, the, the voucher, it yeah, the vouchers I'm seeing that once you start booking for the exam, it picks up your previous history. And if it's, um, I'm not sure what logic is behind it, but it's picking up and says it's got a voucher and then it, it gives you until the end of June to claim. Yes, so yes, I've anyone, seen that. I've it, seen that yeah, anyone can, re anyone can reach out to me. I'm happy to give you a quick demo. I'm already over committing on exam, so another one is not going to break the bank. So you can reach out, <laughs> you can reach out to me and I'll show you and, uh, how I, how, or how I do it and then uh, you can give it a try on your side as well. Uh, France, thanks, man. That's great. That'll be awesome. France, I'm sure people are going to take you up on that. Yeah. Okay, great. So with that, thanks everyone for your time today. I hope you found it worthwhile and look forward to the next one. Hope you all have a great evening, everyone. Chat soon. Cheers.
Cheers, bye. Cheers, Cheers everyone. Everybody. Have a good day. Cheers, Cheers guys.